They called it the Magic City. It happened so quickly. They had business mills and brick buildings went up so fast, built virtually overnight. Anacortes was conceived by Amos Bowman. He saw this as being the New York of the West. He made plans to bring the railroad in. In 1890, it became a boom town. It went from 40 residents to 4,000 residents building this place in one year. And of course, is the Key West of the Northwest, in my opinion. Collects colorful characters as if it was the end of the road and you needed a ferry ticket to go any further. These are just a few of the colorful characters in Anacortes. They're all over the streets, not just the murals, but the people who are, <laughs> the people who are out here. Yeah, this is the old People's Bank right here. And this is Fred Cartwright, the manager. He always had a rosebud in his lapel. And this is his able assistant manager, uh, Ole Olson. Sid Wills and his big come along. He used to move humongous logs with that. Cussed? I never saw a guy that cussed it. Well, maybe Ray Lowe. This is the old Carnegie Library, now the Anacortes Museum. These are some of my friends. That's Bill Lohman there with the salmon. He was the guy that brought Bobo to Anacortes back in 1951. Yeah, there was my buddy Bobo. When I knew him, he was little like that. He grew up to be a pretty big gorilla down in uh, Seattle. Here's my buddy Robert Sund. He was a poet, he did a lot of stuff about the Ish River country. There's his color. I think there is an artistic gene, and I think I caught it in my family. Simple pencil lines, quite a character. Our friend Chuck, he had a head injury back when he was a teenager, and he was in a bad car wreck. He learned how to walk, talk, write, everything all over again. And he started at the bottom with the state ferry system as a deckhand, and he worked his way all the way up to captain. Back in 1984, the Anacorus downtown was dirty, dingy, and dead. We thought that this kind of stuff would kind of brighten up the downtown, and as it turned out, uh, all of this stuff ended up drawing attention to the old buildings, and they started getting painted and revitalized, and next thing you know, you got people all over the downtown. All right, we got all the stuff. Last thing we do with these murals is screw them up. Well, that's the first thing I always do. Within 10 years of starting the mural project, every storefront downtown was full for the first time since the Depression. Ding. Art is a lonely job, and this project has enabled me to work with other people, and I really enjoy that. You can see that you've done something, and it's something that's got some lasting value. It's not like the dishes. The dishes get done, and it's great, but the sink fills up again. And with this, you do it right, and you don't have to touch it for decades, and it feels good to do things that have lasting value.